Hello. Is this the one and only Jaron Gulino? <laughs> yeah. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> You're live on the it? man. It's Bay. Oh, what's happening, Bay? <laughs> what's going on, man? You said seven one number, so I was like expecting it, but it's like a three four something. Is it really? Uh, yeah, three four seven. Oh. Sorry about that. I thought you were a telemarketer. Right. I was about to keep you entertained for 30 minutes. <laughs> so now I'm going to keep you entertained for 30 minutes. Please do. All right. So uh, real quick, I, I, I got to, like, know this. Um, and I've asked, like, people in the – like, when this whole thing started with you and Tantric and all that, and, like, here here's, like, the outsider looking in. Here I am. I'm seeing you going off and you're doing the Tantric thing. And then, like, you're getting a couple days off the road, and you're back home in Philly, and you're playing with Mach 22 on one night. You're playing with On Top the next. You're playing with Killer Kind the next. Then you're back with Tantric, and then you come home, and then you're playing with Delacoma. And then I'm just like, how the freak is this dude doing it? Like, how, dude? Like, how are you doing all this? <laughs> it's all mental, man. You know, you just, if you want it, you got to go get it. Dude, I mean, that's, like, really hardcore. I mean, that's going from, I, I mean, you were playing a lot before the whole tantric thing, and then you just took it to, like, literally seven days a week. Yeah. I mean, uh, you know, my favorite thing is to plug in and play. So if I can get in a room with, you know, some friends or anybody that's, you know, half good, I mean, it's a good time. And, you know, that's, at the end of the day, that's what I'm there to do. It's, I don't look at it as a job ever. You know, it's never – the reason that I'm there and uh, there's never one day that I'm on tour or at a gig where, you know, I don't want to be there. So, um, for me, that's kind of where I'm at. And that's why when I come home, I cannot wait to gig and, uh, you know, just plug in with somebody else, the mock boys or on top or mother or who, you know, whoever's got something going on. I'm, I'm excited to do it every single day. And, uh, it's kind of where my head has been, uh, the last couple of years. Aren't you scared of like, Maybe burning yourself out because it's too much? Like, do you sleep? Nah, man. You know how much Mountain Dew I drink? <laughs> uh, there you go. Look for that sponsor. Get Mountain Dew on board. It's, I'm, I'm working on it. I'm working on it. <laughs> so, all right. So, actually, I, I got to see Mach 22 the other night, which was freaking awesome at the block. And the one thing I was wondering, like, I don't know if you ever noticed this or if you can on, – on stage, actually, can you feel – that the floor in that place shakes? Um, well, first of all, thanks for coming to the show. I appreciate that. Um, but I, you can't feel it on stage, but I've been in the room during other bands playing, and oh, yeah, you can feel it. I mean, it's bizarre. It, yeah. like, And honestly, dude, the, the other night when you guys were playing, it was shaking the most I ever felt to where I, like, I turned to my wife and I said, I'm getting seasick. Like, I think I'm going to throw up. <laughs> like, it was so extreme. And scary. Like somebody I, I else said like, that too. Yeah, like I, I want to like talk to somebody at the block and be like, "Is this going to fall?" Like I'm a little freaked out. <laughs> yeah, it's a little sketchy. I don't know what's going on in there. I was told that it was built to, you know, kind of like absorb the vibration. I mean, I don't know. It's a horrible sounding room as it is. So whatever they're doing for the sound is not working. But um yeah it's it's weird how it moves in there but you know what it's a great venue and they've been more than uh willing to have us back many times now so uh you know thank you to them and you know i never have anything bad to say about anybody there but yeah they should definitely figure out that floor <laughs> i mean i've never surfed but i totally know what it's like to surf now yeah yeah totally. <laughs> so all right so uh, Enter yourself into the world of tantric. Like, how did this whole thing happen and come about? Uh, so my buddy Dell from Delacoma called me um, early last year um, when his band kind of fell apart, and uh, he wanted to salvage uh, one of the weeks of his American tour that he had because he had just made um, a great connection uh, at Summerfest out in Milwaukee, Wisconsin. Um, and he wanted to save that date and that relationship uh, so he put together a week run based around that, and he hired pretty much a brand new band, uh, which consisted of me, um, Chris Green uh, from Taiketo, and uh, he'll kill me for saying it, but and uh, 
Troy, Patrick Farrell, um, you know, from Tantric and a million other bands, uh, White Line and so forth. So um, after doing that run, uh, you know, I had so much fun with Troy and uh, he kind of got the Tantric gig, like, uh, I think it was like a week before he came out with Delacoma. And then when he got home from that Delacoma run, they were like, hey, can you pretty much find us? you know, the the other members of the band, you know, they, they were out of the band as well. So um, Troy brought me in and then uh, we had Johnny Monaco from Enough's Enough on guitar for a little while. Then we had Matt Fuller from Puddle of Mud for a bit. And then finally come January of this year, I was able to bring uh, Sebastian in and uh, we've been killing it ever since and having a blast. So, you know, it's, it's kind of just been seamless. Now, is it kind of weird too to like now you're part of this band that you probably grew up hearing our songs on the radio? Uh, it's not weird. It's at first it was a little bit out of my wheelhouse because I'm, you know, I'm a diehard old older type of dude in terms of the kind of music I like, and I like all the '70s and '80s stuff. Um, so the modern rock thing uh, was a little bit outside of, of my comfort zone in terms of my wheelhouse and playing. I mean. Um, it, it came together very quickly and, and naturally, but um, I was not exposed to that much of the tantric material other than some of the, the hits that everybody knows, you know, Breakdown and, and Morning and stuff. But once I started to dig deep into the catalog and the set list, um, you know, I really fell in love with it. So once I kind of made that personal connection to the tunes, it kind of just all fell into place. Nice. Now, how about like when you came on board, was it uh... – like initially like a temporary thing or just a touring thing? Were you expecting like to be I doing think it was, I, I, no, no. At that point it was like literally we have a tour coming up in three days and we need a band. And it wasn't until two days before that I got the call to do it. Um, so I had two days on, you know, the 14 song set list show up and play with a bunch of people I've never played with before, uh, you know, aside from Troy um, and the first day I met Hugo, I mean, we were literally going on stage in Seattle for the first show uh, without any, you know, proper rehearsal or anything, so uh, yeah, it was uh, pretty <laughs> pretty strange, but it came together quick. That's freaking wild. I can never do that. Uh, it's kind of the, the pressure is what makes it all happen, you know? It's kind of like, uh, I don't know, I always seem to do better knowing that it's either make or break and you just got to do it. You know, I kind of need that. I don't even really need a boost in terms of getting things done, but you know, if if you're under that pressure, you know, you just kind of, you just have to do it. It's, you don't even think about it. You just go on stage like it's any of your other bands and you just hope for the best. Now, when uh, the, the talk of doing an, an album comes up where you kind of shot like, oh, like, I guess this is like a, a real gig turning into <laughs> Oh, sure. So, sorry, I miss, I kind of went off on the question there. Um, so, yeah, when I got in, I, I think it was just to do the tour. Uh, you know, there was no talk, really. It was more like, hey, can you commit yourself to six weeks, you know, and do this gig? Um, and, you know, I had to not only put my life on hold, but I also had to, you know, quit my job and all this stuff to, to commit to it. Um, and then once that tour was over, it was like, cool, like in two weeks we have – you know, another three week run. Can you do that? I'm like, okay, yeah, you know, and so forth. So kind of just started to, after that, I think that second leg of that tour, I think that's kind of where it became more of a band. You know, we had the musical chair spot as far as the guitarist goes, but um, as far as Troy and I go and Hugo, I mean, we were all kind of vibing off each other and getting along great. So I think that kind of cemented things. And then the album, I mean, there's a couple songs on the album. They were done before, um, we got to it this year and that was with the previous lineup from a couple of years ago that it just, the album had never, you know, been completed and never got done. And a couple of those songs were being thrown around, uh, to possibly play in the set list when I first got hired on. Um, and then once the new year turned, the label was kind of hounding Hugo, you know, Hey, you need to get this record done. And, um, that's when it became pretty real, but I'll be even more honest with you. It wasn't until like, a month before we actually went into the studio that we even like knew we were definitely doing it. It was kind of just like, Hey, we're going on tour for a month. And at the end of the month, we're going in the studio for a week to do some additional songs, you know, for what will become the album at some point. And then once we got in there and started recording, I mean, it just went so quickly in terms of getting things done that 
<laughs> we were uh, actually able to finish more songs than we were required and uh, able to go back and touch on some of the other songs and uh, finish some things up there as well. That's awesome. Now, were you guys involved with any of the writing, or is it Hugo doing the whole, all the writing? Or it, It's mostly Hugo. Um, you know, all the songs Hugo wrote, and they are amazing songs, I can tell you that. Uh, you know, we were able to come in and put our stamp on it, you know, a little excess playing, uh, you know, big guitar solos. Um, you know, we, we definitely switched some things around, but I wouldn't go as far as saying I wrote anything on there. I just really contributed some bass lines, really, and Sebastian – uh, you know, leads, and he actually has some pretty killer vocals on there as well. So I'm excited for everyone to hear. That's awesome. Yeah, I can't wait to hear the whole album. Next week, man, it's almost here. Next week, October 5th, Mercury Retrograde. It'll be out there. Oh yeah, the singles out there. Everybody's getting. I was reading reviews today. Everybody's loving the album. Yeah, it's. Uh, if you like any tantric album before this one i mean you'll definitely love this it's got a little bit of everything that you've heard from us um as a band uh you know in previous lineups and then a little bit more i think you'll get a taste of uh i don't want to say mach 22 but sebastian and i for sure you know um like i said big guitars lots of cool solos um a little bit more involved uh you know intricacies here and there so uh very 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 proud and uh i hope you all like it very much now, now, what's it like for you as, uh, you know, the local uh, Philly area boy? Actually, you're from, what, Chester County? Uh, I, yeah, I live in Chester County now. So you one minute you're, like, playing, we'll say, for instance, you're playing Tusk on South Street, and the next sure. night you're playing Lincoln Financial Field opening for Guns N' Roses. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, is the question, what's that like? Or what's the question exactly? Yeah. yeah, Like what, what is that like exactly? Um, well, I don't want to be a jerk and say it's it's not really a big deal, but don't get me wrong. Playing the link and Wells Fargo. I mean, those were amazing rooms and to do that for the first time in a room that big. Um, yeah, I mean, it, you know, it almost takes your breath away, but it's no different than going on stage anywhere else. I mean, you're going to get the same show. Um, it, at least for me personally, I honestly prefer the small clubs. I like down and dirty in your face, tight, really loud, sweating to death. But, uh, Hey man, walking out on the, the open air stages like that, that's also really cool. Um, it's just a whole different beast. And, uh, I don't know. It's, it's, it's a different connection. You know, you, you vibe off energy and when you're playing a place that big, it doesn't take much to, uh, to bring that energy to you, whether there's, you know, 50,000 people there or 10, it it doesn't make a difference. It's, you're kind of running on adrenaline. You know, it, it's so weird because like when, when I saw you the other night, like, um, so I, I went and saw you guys and, and I watched some of the skids. And then as I was walking out, I hear, yo, and it was you, you're standing outside the block. And we talked for a few minutes and I was heading down to see Punky Meadows and Frank Domino. And, you know, here oh, yeah. um, in the block and I mean, there's probably about 500 people there at least. Um, nice crowd, everybody's into it. And then I get down to bar 13 and there was like 30 people there, but they, yeah, they, I mean, it's crazy, but they brought their a game and like, and that was the part like I'm sitting there and I'm getting all into it. I'm just like, it, it's gotta be so tough. Like for, for, I don't know. You know what I mean? Like going from one night playing 500 people and the next night could be 50 or 20. It's just like, where the hell's them people at? Like, where did they all go? You know what I mean? Yeah. I, it's, a, it's a different mindset. I mean, I'm sure it crosses most people's minds. I mean, on the tantric run, I mean, we do a lot of package uh, dates. And, you know, some nights there's a couple thousand people. Some nights there's a couple hundred. Some nights there's, you know, like you said, 40, 50 people. So, I don't know, man. It, it might mess with people's heads in terms of what what they do or playing or lack of enthusiasm. But, Honestly, I think anybody that's seen me in any of my bands or, you know, anything that I do, I, I try to bring 110% energy to every show because, honestly, as much as I'm there to deliver a show for the people, I'm actually there for myself and because I want to play, you know. So, um, yeah, I, I see both sides of that. And, um, you know, you just got to kind of zone it out and, and play, you know, like you're playing for yourself and you want to make yourself proud and, 
And, you know, you're only as good as your last show, so you might as well bring it, whether there's one person there or, you know, 1,000 people. Right. So, uh, you know, through um through the lovely world of the internet and YouTube and stuff like that, so as I was going through and looking things up, I found a bunch of old skateboard videos of yours. And I was wondering, was that, like, your <laughs> oh, first love? Like, was that your, like, thing? Like, were you chasing to become a the pro skateboarder before rock and roll, or...? It wasn't even more of a chase. It was just, uh, you know, that's what I love to do. I it like playing music. If I did it for a job or if I did it for fun, it, I, I care about it the same amount, you know, and I felt that way about skateboarding. And I still do. Things that I look at on Instagram, it's like 90% of it's skateboarding and the other 10% is like food and musicians. <laughs> but, uh, yeah, I, 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 you know, I have passion for it. I'm big into being active and um, – you know, that's kind of a activity or a sport, if you will, that kind of has no boundaries. And, uh, you know, I keep post tabs on it and I still kick around the board every once in a while, but I got to be careful, man. I can't be getting hurt and breaking my wrist or anything like that. Yeah. Yeah. You don't need that. The government. <laughs> no. Yeah. So, but yeah, it was my first love more or less. And, uh, once I started getting serious about playing, you know, and also the other thing is, you know, as you get older, out of your teens, you know, a lot of your friends stop doing certain things, and it's not as fun to go skateboarding by yourself as it is to, you know, play guitar by yourself. But um, you kind of just find your way and and you do what you can when you can. Yeah, you know, I'm going to say this to you, like uh, my co-host Nick, he's usually very quiet during the interviews, but he just sent me a message, mm-hmm. and I'm going to read it to you. He says. He's the only person that has come on the show and has ever, ever said, bring your A game every time. He's doing it for the love of playing. So much honesty right there. I mean, yeah, that's no bull, man. I mean, you talk to anybody, you know, that's, that I'm friends with, and they'll tell you. I mean, I literally cannot wait to pull up to the venue so I can carry my own gear onto the stage and plug it in so I can hear it. <laughs> that's the kind of stuff no. that, you know, makes me happy. It, it's just, it's crazy because, you know, I, I pay attention and I keep track of weird things that our guests say and nobody, I, I mean, and I'm talking about like from the guys from Funky Meadows to like Charlie Daniels, all the people we've had on the show in between, like nobody has ever said like, it doesn't matter how many people are there when I get on stage and play, like I do it because I love it. Not one person has ever said that to us. Uh, well, that's cool. I mean, you know, that's how I feel about it. And, you know, most people just, I guess, approach it differently. But, uh, you know, I, I literally just got, I'll tell you this. I just got back from New York. I'm sitting in my driveway. I was in New York City today. I left at 7 a.m. to drive up there to get a rehearsal in um, with some of my bandmates from my old band mother. We literally just locked ourselves in a closet-sized jam room in Brooklyn for five hours and literally just had like 20 to 30-minute jams back to back to back for the entire time and then left. And I've been in the car since five o'clock. It took me four hours and 20 minutes to get home and all because, you know, why not just to have fun and, and to play our instruments. So if that doesn't tell you, uh, you know, what it's all about uh, in terms of what I'm about, I mean, I don't know what else will. It's all awesome. Holy cow. Now, when do you head back out on tour with uh, Tantra? Uh, I think Sebastian and I are pulling out of here on the 9th. Um, and then we'll meet down in uh, Nashville. We're bringing um, our own back line out in terms of gear uh, on this run. So uh, we'll meet the trailer and everything on the 10th or the 9th uh, in Nashville, and then we'll fly out to Washington State right outside Seattle. We're doing a casino gig with Puddle of Mud, um, and then we fly the next day back to Nashville and start our Mercury Retrograde headline tour. Um, until the 8th, I think it's the 18th of November. So we'll be out, you know, pretty much that entire time, uh, no breaks. And uh, be out promoting the record and, you know, another six-week run right after this last one. And uh, we're all excited and can't wait to get back out. That's awesome. Now, how about, like, you just mentioned, like, Puddle of Mud, like, uh, Western Puddle of Mud. He's had many run-ins with the law over the years. Like, do you get nervous? Like, oh, boy, like, uh, I hope everything's going to be cool with this dude. No, nah, he's been as far as I have known him, which has now been since I want to say April. Um, he's been sober. He's been sober all year. He went to rehab. He did his whole thing. He's actually really, really cool. Um, 
he's super laid back. He just likes to smoke a little weed. I mean, hey, better than, you know, being on junk and all that stuff. But uh, the only deal with him is, you know, we, we keep the booze away. If anybody's a drinker, we we uh, we keep the booze away and, you know, just make sure he's on a straight path and surrounded by positive vibes. And uh, I don't think you're getting anything other than positive vibes uh, from us. So, um, you know, it, it, it's actually not as crazy as you would think. It's pretty tamed. That's cool. That's very cool. Very cool, man. So uh, well, before I let you go, I'm going to play. I'm going to play the new song too for everybody so they can hear. It's called "Letting Go." But uh, one other question I'm going to throw out there to you: Are, are you Italian? Uh, yeah, can you tell by my last name? <laughs> so uh, I have to ask all my fellow Italians this: Is it a uh, gravy or sauce? Uh, it depends who you ask. I, I would say sauce just because I'm, um, you know, oh, I'm just really different like oh, that. Oh, oh. But if I'm around yeah. any Italian, it's always gravy. Okay, there you go. I was, I, I, if it's you, and you're, uh, what would your mother say? To you? Like, would she smack you up your side your head if you said sauce? Like, uh, is she? Well, not gravy? my mom. <laughs> no, my mom is Swedish, so I don't get the Italian from her. I get it from my dad's side, and when I'm around his side and my relatives on that side, it's all gravy. Um, you know, and anytime I'm around anybody else that's Italian, if it's somebody else's family, you know, if it's Damien's family or, you know, whoever, you know, it would, it would be gravy all day. I mean, there's no debate. Absolutely. Very good. Very good. I'm glad to hear that. You don't know how many of the Italians come yeah, you know, on the show. Stay together. I want to smack them. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Speaking of smack, uh, you guys were out there with the Veer Union. And uh, yep. I interviewed Crispin, the lead singer, uh, as you guys mm-hmm. were getting ready. To Great guy. And I, and I said to him, I said, when you see Sebastian and Jaron, make sure you smack him upside the head for me and send them some love. He was scared. To uh, he never laid a hand on me. Yeah. <laughs> he, Why are you scared me? He's, he's huge. He's like, dude, he goes, I, I didn't even meet the guys yet. I'm like, just do it. Don't, don't, you know, just tell them it's some Philly love. Don't, don't respect you. Nah, no, nah, they they were super kind to us. Um, it's just funny because those guys are all jacked up, you know, they're all like muffled and, and stuff. But when when stuff's going sideways and stuff looks like it might be going down, they're nowhere to be found. <laughs> you know, you think that, oh these guys are tough, they're gonna like whoop somebody, and then you know there's drama, and then you know there's beeline at the back door. It's funny. I don't know. I'm like, cool, I'm staying away from any kind of drama, but you know, <laughs> like, dude, this guy's gonna be my bodyguard, and then sure enough, no chance. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that's too funny. So, you want to throw anything out there? Throw out plugs. Where should we ever be, everybody get the the album next week? Where will it be available? Sure, Mercury Retrograde's coming out next Friday, uh, October fifth. It'll be at most Walmart's, um, uh, Meyer grocery stores if you're out in the Midwest. But if you're on the East Coast here, if you know where an FYE is or any kind of mom and pop. Uh, CD store or Walmart, that's your best bet to get a physical copy. Um, you can get them from our label, which is Pavement Entertainment. Uh, you can get them from us at shows. We will have them. Uh, other than that, I mean, Spotify, iTunes, you know, the whole, the whole deal, man. It's uh, We're pulling all the stops on this one. So if you can't find it, you're not looking. Good answer. Jaron, thanks so much for doing this, man. It was good seeing you guys the other night. Kicked ass as always. And, uh, I'm sure once you get back to town, you'll be playing again, and I'll see you again. Yeah, man. Appreciate you having me. Always, man. Be safe out there. Have a great have fun. You too, man. Yep. Take care. Bye. All right, well, there he goes. Jaron from Tantric, Mach 22. And here's uh, here's their new single. It's called Letting Go.